Nothing happened. We're fine. Nobody can see that. I'm a professional. I should have told him I went AFK. But anyways, in the top right. One, we missed one minute. That's it. All right, one minute. It's fine. We're good. In the top right from... What is it? I'm going to make sure I have this right. Nothing's happening, okay? It is fine. The 19-year-old... Ukrainian Protoss player from Team Wolf's Lair. Wow, that's pretty hardcore. It's Hellraiser. I feel like you gotta say it with intensity because there's no point in saying it otherwise. And in the bottom left, the American Terran player, 16 years old. These kids these days. I remember when I used to play StarCraft when Good. I was young. Now I, have your I wish I played StarCraft at 16. Well, I started at 17, but close enough. It is from Rise Esports. Future. Who beat Neeb, by the way. Neeb, you guys probably have heard of. A Protoss player as well. The Adept shades away at the worst possible time. The Reaper's gonna come in, but there's no tech to scout. Which is a little odd. Maybe one probe? Looks like not quite gonna finish it off. He gets it. But the stalker is gonna be bounced away. No. The adept coming up. He actually pulls SCVs, something you rarely see. The micro back. Future with big moves so far. Actually saving all the SCVs. Impressive. And this is how he beat Neeb, by the way. Just very impressive micro and decisive timings. Still, that Reaper just never dies. I quit. <clears throat> so dramatic. We're gonna we're gonna play in the bushes here a little bit. He he bought some time. Which means the Widow Mine is more likely to get a hit off. Will Hellraiser walk into it? If he could get a Stalker off this. Oh, that would be super nice. The hit comes out. We'll lose the Widow Mine. Let's see if Future tries to save it. What is the attack behind? He opted immediately for the Robo. War Prism on the way. This is going to be a heavy pressure to start. Oh. He sees the Widow Mine. Going to back off to the side. Overall, it looks like Future should be equipped to deal with this pressure. Having a Widow Mine at the front. Wait, is there an Observer on the field? Where is the Ops? It just came out of the, of the Robo. So, he can dodge with the Prism. But by the time he's able to, to really do too much. Well, if that Bunker doesn't finish, we have another conversation entirely. Okay, wait a second. This is going to get kind of weird. He's going to get the Medivac, but the Widow Mines will burrow. He can dodge the Widow Mines with the War Prism. Does. Remember, the splash damage is still going to come out. Some fancy moves there. If you don't have Blink, find a way. But still, the hits are going to come out. He dodges, but the shields are all stripped away from most of the Stalkers. The pressure is good. The problem with doing the Robo opener is that it's hard to find a follow-up easily. Um, I said very, very... Very articulately. It, it's hard to find something easily. Nailed it. But there's going to be five more gates and glaive the depths. That's the transition. Good micro so far out of Hellraiser. Only 39 probes. He's not building anymore. More pylons on the way. He's looking for a killing blow. I don't think Future is anywhere close to ready for this. He just started Stim Combat Shield and plus one infantry weapons. There is not a wall. There's not a block. All, like, this should and could be a deadly attack. A little bit of fancy micro here. But the Adept Shade into the main mineral, well, the natural mineral line. SCVs are going to fall to start. Another eight Adepts are warping it, and that's a deadly number. I... 
The shade being thrown. He needs to somehow find a way. Oh, the cyclone kind of kind of caught on the top of the ramp, trying to do damage. He, he actually surrounds the adepts near the bunker. Best case scenario, more of the boys are going to have to be pulled. Marines out of the bunker. He actually locks onto the prism. If he could get it, maybe that would be something. But eight more adepts will warp in. GG Hellraiser takes game number one with a decisive game ending timing. And he did it. Well, well, the weakness of the Robo build, especially like, well, it's hard to macro out of. You, you can't. There's really no, um, there's really no, no follow up if you don't do damage, Good. because it's just, now it's I just that like if, if you don't go directly into like a Robo Bay, you can't really get a third against someone who, who is going to be getting stim. But in this case, I guess if you just make eight gate adept, that's that's pretty good follow up. Works out. That was loud. When in doubt, 8k to depth. Does that? It is an American flag. So we have one Dutch player, two Canadians, two Polish players, three Ukrainian players, one Finnish player, and two Americans and one Russian. Pretty solid split. We two minutes. All right. I guess we're waiting for the whole organizer of the tournament here. So, uh, to give you a little behind the scenes action, um, the way we're doing it, because the players are from different regions, it is online, uh, we do switch servers uh, pretty much every other game. So, the ping advantage kind of goes back and forth. It's not huge usually from Europe to NA, but like, You'd rather have 20 ping than 100, right? Like, <laughs> the worst is Korea to, like, Europe, which can be... Well, the worst is when Australians try to play this game. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't have any of those North Americans here. sure who that is but <laughs> future in the bottom left and okay there it is i was like he built in the main last time a critical mistake it looks like he's not going to make that mistake it, again because we all know weak terrans build in the main instead you just pick kind of a semi-random spot on the map and you, you slap a barracks down there Hellraiser on the other side, just... Oh, he's opening up. He's not scouting early. 
So will he he will he just prepare for the early Is that another? No, it's just one SUV. Double gas on the way. Now the question is where will the factory be built? Not only the barracks, but the factory, and sometimes also the starport. Um pretty much the only things that are built in the main in, in many games nowadays are SCVs and depots. It is going to be a gate expand, but with a with a cyber core before expand here, importantly for Hellraiser. That gives access to units like well having stalkers, warp gate quicker, can start a robo and shield batteries. So it's a safer expand. We've kind of regressed a little bit. For a time, players were just like, we're just gonna one gate expand. Just just delay the, the cyber core. It'll be fine. And then the Terrans were like, have you seen Cyclones? I don't a, se a second, well, a factory is on the way. I was going to say a second building, but I decided to be a little more precise than that. The Adept. Throw in the shade. Not going to catch the Reaper early. This map, not so great for Reapers. There's no, there's no cliff to jump in on the side. You have to come up the front. And pretty much only this area is open. I mean... A couple Reapers still can get some good scouting info. A reactor? Okay. Is that just to build is he gonna go Well I don't I don't know. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna speculate here. It's double liberator. We've never seen this before. It's double medevac. Why? So you can bring more SCVs to repair, of course. It looks like it will be maybe reactor Hellions, and then possibly a Coke Banshee or a Medivac to start things off. He is mining with three and gas on each side, so it should be a heavy tech play. Cyclones are on the table. Coke Banshee's on the table. Hellions and Medivac? Don't make me a liar. There it is. Medivac starts. It only takes three hits to kill a probe. Four Hellions are a deadly number. There's going to be very little time to react for Hellraiser if he doesn't have a pylon or something near the edge of his base. Well, good thing he's got a pylon or something near the edge of his base, then. For you Ukrainian fans out there. A Liberator will be the follow-up. In future... Well, we'll see if he actually builds anything more uh, drastic out of the starport. I'm surprised. Yeah, he's sending it out now. A little bit of a delay. He can get in, get the Hellions in, then follow up with the Widow Mondra, potentially. This should be... The Reapers could be used for distraction, and it looks like they will be. Hellraiser, does he see it? Does he see it? He, he's got to see it now. He doesn't know. He doesn't realize. The Hellions are in the base. He's got to pull away. Immediate splits on the probes. Only two probes lost so far. The Reapers can also go into the natural simultaneously. He wants to try to get some more damage done. He sees the units pulled back. Reaper's still at the front. He'll pick up and get out with all the Hellions. Six probes killed, and he gets away free. Now, remember, Hellraiser already has an expansion. He has some of his infrastructure. He has another Nexus. The Robo's already done. So while damage can be dealt out, it, it, hasn't, it hasn't amassed to a, a critical point yet. A War Prism is on the way for some potential counter damage. Reapers and Hellions in the front. Looking for opportunities. That, oh, and a four mine drop. This is such a dead mineral line. Big hits coming out. 14. And more in the net. Oh, if he could get the prism as well. I mean, it doesn't hurt to get anything here. Picks up the immortal, gets out 18 kills so far. And the Liberator still graces the Nexus with its presence. The American Terran fighting back. I'm not by. Still four Widow Mines. The Medivac still has plenty of HP. The Liberator gets away, and it's 32 to 24 workers. A bunker's done on the opposite side. He saw the prism. He has preparation. What's inside? A Stalker and an Immortal. There's not that much on... There's not, not that much here. He has to warp in. The Mine Drop coming in. The Liberator still going to work. The probe's being slaughtered. All Future has to do is hold. The Viking going to work. Eight probes died on the other side. Down goes the Warp Prism. 
Gonna try to get some more damage onto the probes. There's only 19 probes left. He can siege up again. The immortal. No, it's gone. I don't know what the Viking's doing. No more probes will die. Twelve more. And the Liberator gets out. GG. Future takes. Game number two. We're all tied up. I mean, very solid execution. I feel like Hellraiser a little greedy there. It, it's just, I, I've, I've tried everybody, I'm sure everybody, all pro Terrans and, and pro Toss, and even some Zergs have chimed in, but like, what is the best response to the proxy? Do you actually go out and look for it? Because even if you find it, then what? Like, but if you don't go look for it, if you don't try to get that information, There's a lot of, uh, there's a, a, a lot of, I guess, chance involved. Because even if you see, like, he has a barracks on the map, that doesn't necessarily tell you very much. Like, what if he just goes straight into Cloak Banshee? I'd... Well, we'll see. It's one to one. Future showing his strength. I don't know the answer, by the way. Future beat need three to one. Um, very much off the back of, of this style of just very aggressive play. And proxies. Yeah, proxies. Mostly proxies. <laughs> Acid Plant is up next. There we go. I did it. Wolf's Lair, Esports is Hellraiser. In the bottom right and Rise Esports Future. In the top left, fighting for their chance to beat uh, a laser. Ooh. That's a tall order for either player. And Laser, one of the best players in the world. But I don't think either of them is is, in, is incapable of it. Like, I don't think it's a walkover. But still, it's, it's an uphill battle. Even if they win this, win this match. Early scout here. Hellraiser looking around. He's not going to be caught unawares again. But future building in the main. We'll see if that comes back to bite him. Hellraiser is gonna scout this game. I think I think he's done with getting getting blindsided. Looks like we're gonna we're gonna open up relatively passively here. Future future looks like he's going for a one rack to expand, no second gas taking it. And Hellraiser confirms he's safe to go for the gate expo and delay his cybercore just a little bit because there's nothing that can threaten him early on. There's no Quick Reaper. There's not going to be Hellions or Cyclones. Uh, just a command center. Thank you, by the way, to the Muslim for the host. Thanks for the support. How do, how do, you, how do you beat Proxy Rex? <laughs> we are on a delay, of course. Give them some, give them some winter clones, and thank you very much. Hopefully, you're doing well. A little lag them. No commitment to tech yet, and it looks like he's not going to commit with the Reaper either. The SCV gets in. Hellraiser looks like he's going to go with the Robo again. 
I give up. I quit. All right. I don't know why I said that in the first place, but I had a two and three chance. The Stargate opener. I guess against a Terran player who who is playing kind of passive, if you can get some damage done, you can kind of take control. That's why the Stargate is very popular with especially Korean players. If you're on top of the Terran, or on even on top of the Zerg, Stargate very popular in PvZ, just because you get scouting information, potential damage, and you control the potential responses as well. Like you can't just you can't just go for mass roaches and, and telegraph that because they can just build void rays. I hope that's just me lagging that, by the way. But I'm not sure. None of the players have asked for a pause yet. Has there been any scouting on this? There has not. Hellion's on the way. There's no anti-air at all. Um, yeah. There's no... He's not following this up with any Widow Mines. The Oracle could just ransack the main base. It looks like it's going to be a Cloak Banshee play, which is... can be a counter, because there's limited detection on the Stargate, but... He's holding the oracles, too, so... This could be very bad. Future Future's build just is not going to stack up very well compared to Hellraiser right now. He's held on to his tech. He's kept his cards close to his chest. The Hellions are going to have to do big damage before the oracles burn through them. Now, the oracles are going to have to be used for defense. That is important. But a lot of damage will be done. Ten, ten probes so far. All the, uh, all the Hellions die. So was that worth it? Hellraiser doesn't really have a follow-up tech. He was forced to use his oracles. He doesn't have a robo. I think this actually stacks up being pretty good for, for future here. He's going to have a Cloak Banshee coming in. There is no shield battery in the main. It's just now starting. The oracles are going to be on the opposite side of the map, and only one of them is going to have a revelation. Future, well, he only has five marines at home. Um, that is that is a problem. The pickup isn't quite there in time. The Coke Banshee going to work, going to kill some probes. The battery almost done. He's able to get into the bunker. That's huge for Future. Another Coke Banshee's coming out. And it seems like this is all turned around. More adepts. Like, this game is very confusing right now. The, the, the state of the game. Hellraiser has the units. Well, I actually threw away most of his units. But he has he has an okay economy. He has a lot of tech. But he just really can't do anything to Future. Especially now that his Stargate was revealed. Whereas Future just doesn't really have any units. Like, he, ha he has... Two Cloak Banshees and nine Marines. He doesn't even have Stim on the way. He's supply blocked and can't even build his Siege Tank. So we're, we're at some an odd state of the game where neither player can hurt one another, but they can definitely set themselves up for a better follow-up. Blink Stalkers are, I mean, an expensive follow-up in this scenario. I, I feel like that, that money would have been better invested in, in a Forge or two. Especially considering that future has no threat of actually attacking, but it's it's really hard to know what what the right call is when you're in the dark like this. How much does Hellraiser know? He doesn't know about the third base. He doesn't know when the production's being added on. All he knows, or all he knew rather, was that there were reactor Hellions early, uh, and then a Cloak Banshee follow up, which does mean there's not going to be Stin, there's not going to be a bunch of tanks, there's not going to be Metavacs. But he is going to be severely lacking in the upgrade. So we'll see. I, I just keep talking hypotheticals because I, I don't think the game should be ending any moment now. But as Futures Marines are just kind of out on the map and Hellraiser has Blink Stalkers, I might be entirely wrong again. Where are the Oracles? A couple Phoenixes as well. The Banshees will drive back the Blink Stalkers for now, but... But Future only has six Marines. Um, okay, never mind. Future's dead. I give up. I 
quit. This is why I have a 40% TVP win rate, guys. Um, because I have no idea what I'm talking about. You guys hear that? Somebody's car alarm is going on. <laughs> Jeez. That's not my car. My Bugatti. That almost felt like two players playing two different games. It felt like both players were doing their build kind of regardless of what their opponent was doing. Um, and it ended up that Hellraiser got the better end of that at the end of the day. More water. I'm going to stop trying to predict things. Or just, I'll think one thing and then say the opposite, and that will probably leave me better off at this rate. Two to one for Hellraiser. It is best of fives throughout the day. And the uh, round of eight and the playoff, the rest of the playoffs will be next weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Uh, Central European time, 10 a.m. Pacific, and 2 a.m. in Korea. So um, for all my Korean fans, Thank you for being here. Come Somni Dial. I'm not sure what we're Oh, we're waiting for We're waiting for Alex. You see, this is why we do replays. Alright. Why watch it live when you can watch it? days later without nearly as much hype right guys right YouTube when this is inevitably this whole VOD is inevitably posted and monetized on YouTube Fracture is Future's last chance to have himself in this tournament. Let me let me see if I can can, I can actually put a coherent thought together and have it be accurate. That would be the real comeback story. But in the bottom right, the 16-year-old American Terran player for Rise Esports, Future. And in the top left, it is Wolf's Lairs, esports is, it's quite a mouthful. Hellraiser, the 19 year old Ukrainian. Future, what are you doing? He has lost 100% of the games where he built his barracks in his main. Now, now this is actually something Terrence had been doing on this map. If the probe just goes in and out and, and just looks around for the gases, it won't actually scout it. So we'll see. Some players have been taken up. Oh. I swear that's true sometimes, okay? Like, I'm not always wrong. <laughs> I don't... But he will see the racks in the main. And that does give away. He's a little bit safer. He can go for the expo if he'd like. It looks like he's just going to be adding on the cyber core and then an expo a little safer. Because there's still the risk. This is a, a smaller map, a, a much shorter rush distance than most.
a marine first as well, which means a quick factory follow-up. He doesn't really want the probe to be able to scout that. But once the Marine comes out, it will be given away, so. The Pro being very slippery. The second guess. The lack of second guess is important to scout as a Protoss as well. The Marine should be able to pick off the Pro. Hellraiser. Not going to see the Command Center, but it's almost implied by the lack of second guess. The Zealot going to sneak out. Actually, this, he opted for a Zealot. He already saw that it was going to be a barracks essentially in the main and goes for the Zealot anyways. So the Zealot part of the, well, part of the plan, not a reaction, but part of the plan all along is what that means. The Dap coming out. He's just looking to put on a lot of early pressure and it could be successful here. Just a Zealot and an Adept. There's no, there's one Marine. And if you get your command center delayed for too long, that's really bad barely begins to subscribe. Uh, barely begins to describe it. And the Adept's gonna come up. This this is gonna go downhill really quickly. That... Okay, he got him. He got him. All right. The wall comes up. Two more Marines on the way. The command center is delayed. He's gonna need to add on another depot in the main instead of using his second base as that supply. The Robo is the choice once again. And the depot doesn't come up. The Adept going to hold on top of it. It actually will shade right back through in front. Future, oh no. Oh no, you can't just let them, you can't just let them in. I. Right. two more Marines come out. Will we actually be able to hold off? The Hellion microing away just barely from the Zealot's blades. Going to bring an SCV out to help. The Stalker, not quite going to be picked off. So, the delay on the command center was the biggest part of this. Two SCVs die. The Zealot and the Adept Four SCVs total. Once again, off to a, a really weird start. I believe a war prism was built? Nope. I give up. An immortal is on the way. There's going to be a cyclone drop. Well, marine slash cyclone drop coming out. The stalkers are coming up. The marines are out on the map for some reason. The command center does finish. The, the stalkers are actually caught because why are those marines there? The stalkers don't know either. The body block coming through. The target is there. He can boost a Cyclone Pass. He can get the damage done. There is an Immortal on the opposite side. And the boost comes out. Will we be able to actually finish off the Stalker? 2 HP. All I can do is just play by play now. A single Immortal will definitely put a big dent into the Cyclone and the Marines, whatever it ends up hitting. There is no shield battery here, though. There's a lot of danger with... With the medevac combined, he's warping in a couple more stalkers. The immortal might be able to be targeted down. Goes for another one. A war prism is out. Future once again with the very aggressive plays despite having some economy back at home. This is where he's most comfortable. We've seen a lot of games of Future just throwing unit after unit after unit. And sometimes he just has no units left and dies. And sometimes he wins the game. But either way, it's action packed. Drops into the main. The Stalkers come back to defend. He can actually dodge the shots potentially on the ground. But if he loses the medevac, that potential is gone. Warp Prism coming in is on the opposite side. There's a Robo Bay coming up too. Is that for probably for Disruptors? An immortal is inside the prism, making this incredibly dangerous to almost everything that future has. Gonna warp in a couple zealots as well. Does he go for the lock? The boys have to be pulled. Doesn't quite get the pickup on one of the stalkers. Gonna get the zealots though. On the other side, a liberator sieges up. There are no stalkers in position. The medevac still pinned at the back. SCVs dying, but so are probes. Nine SCVs fall, five probes are liberated. The medevac looking for an opportunity. The stalkers still have it pinned. And, okay, everybody just calm down for a second. 43 probes to 30 SCVs. A Colossus is on the way. Still some SCVs chilling over here. The Stalker, the Liberator will siege on it. A couple shots come out. He's not, okay, he's just barely in range with the Liberator. There's still the Medevac in the back. A Viking, I don't know if the Viking is actually trying to kill the Prism. Yeah, it looks like it's trying to kill the Prism. I thought it was going to go over and harass. It's, he recalls the Prism. Is he going to Colossus drop? Like, I'm wondering why the prism was recalled as opposed to... I mean, there is a Viking out, but he didn't know that. Don't tell me he's gonna... He's not gonna Colossus... Why are you just sending it out again? Oh, he, I guess he wanted the Immortals at home. Okay, that, I guess... 
feels like kind of a waste of a recall. He could have just, just sent it home. But the Viking not going to find the prism. It's going to work out. Future on the attack. Three tanks with this. There's still the medevac. If the units are pulled away, the medevac can get in and really muck things up for Hellraiser when it comes to solidifying a defense. There is a Colossus here. The drop in the back. The shield battery not online quite yet. He can target it down so quickly. The Observer sees all the tanks. The tanks are everything in this push. And they're going to be... What? Well, is he going to siege him up? He does. There is an Immortal. The, the target on the Colossus. So important for taking out those Marines. Still one tank survives. Damage being done. The Colossus comes forward. The drop in the back... Cleaned up. There's a Viking. There's a Viking. The Warp Prism. Future has taken a third command center. The damage is being done. The drop comes out. This one should be cleaned up, but he actually... Oh my god, he gets out. Wait, who's chasing who? He used the recall on the Prism before. The, the, the Viking actually killing Stalkers. The other Stalker is blocked by the first Stalker. Why is this army here? The boys can be pulled. There's a force field option on the ramp. Wait, there's an army on the other side. The tank... Who, wait, whose base is this? Future taking some damage. It looks like, well, the medevac was taken out as well. Everything is on the opposite side. The boys are pulled. Guardian shield, trying to take down the Colossus. Doesn't find it. Hellraiser wins. I give up. Close enough, right? So, you're up 2-0 over North America right now. Next up is Bly versus Mana, Zerg versus Protoss. I'm still, I just don't know. Maybe, maybe I can find some semblance of sanity in this next match. Probably not. Looks like we're about ready. I just, I needed some time to recover. 